Hello and welcome to my next video. Uh, this video is going to be concerning these little guys here, which are my king quails. Now they've recently uh, had all of these chicks and these guys are about a week old now. Um, and I actually had a couple of people ask me about how I uh, feed them and look after them. Um, so I thought it'd be a good chance to do a little video. So uh, I'm going to show you a video on how I give uh, these sort of foods here and a little water bowl there. Um, how I keep these guys fed and uh, growing strong. Uh, so first up I'm just going to have a little bit of footage of my original pair which the as you can see the female I have now is an albino female. I originally got a red breasted female to go with my red breasted male who's at the back corner there. Uh, you'll see more of him of course later in the video. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a bit of footage of those two first off and how I keep my just my normal pair, which I uh, um, caught a little bit of footage of. But I wasn't very happy with the female, so I actually swapped her out and got this albino female. And I'm glad I did because uh, immediately I've had some success. Um, the red-breasted female wasn't uh, sitting on any of the eggs she was laying and just scattering them um, quite a few times. And uh, yeah, the albino female has been a really good mum. So. You're going to get some footage of uh, the quails first up and then the, uh, the hen sitting on some eggs. And then I'm going to show you the feeding process that I use. And then after that, we're going to have some video footage uh, of them. And then I'm going to have a little short follow-up uh, video at the end where the uh, chicks have grown up a little bit. So maybe in about a month's time or something like that. So I hope you enjoy this video and... Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Okay guys, so I'm now going to show you uh, uh, a little bit of the food that I feed my quails, um, in particular when they do have these uh, small chicks. So one thing I do find very handy is these uh, sort of smaller, shallower bowls. This is actually the uh, sort of, what do you call it, <laughs> base plate of a like a pot plant. So you stick the pot plants in here and this gathers the water, so like a pot plant saucer or something you would call it and these are very cheap they're just plastic you can get them from your local sort of garden center or hardware place in particular these are from Bunnings um, and when the chicks are very small they're still able to easily access um, these bowls which are which are really good so if you do usually have uh, larger or deeper size uh, seed bowls and water bowls I, th I find it very important to give them something a bit shallower 
uh, with a bit more access. So what we're going to put in here today um, is sort of a dry mix for them. And I'm going to go through with you and show you exactly what I put in there. I've also got some uh, sprouted seed for them. Um, I've just sprouted some seed. Uh, you can see there. Now this is quite a wet mix, this one, um, which I find is good for the young ones that might be struggling to get a bit of water. Uh, the normal sprouted mix, which I have here, which is going for my finches, is uh, a little bit drier. And you can see there it's got quite a lot of sprouts there. Uh, I do have a video on how to sprout seed on my channel. Uh, I might put a link to that below in the description if you are interested in that. Uh, it's very simple and the birds really love it. Uh, this is the water bowl that I use when the quails do have chicks. Again, it's very shallow and even when you fill it up, uh, if chicks happen to jump in here, <laughs> which they do, um, they won't drown. Uh, one thing you'll find if you do have deeper bowls that they can get into, uh, unfortunately they, they do uh, quite often jump in those bowls and drown. Uh, it's, it's one of the most common deaths I find with quail chicks. So my, my normal water bowls are, are quite high uh, for that reason. There's no real way for a quail chick to get in there when they are sort of small enough to get into trouble. Um, but you'll see that these little bowls are perfect. They can sort of even reach over and just sip the water out, which is great. But if they do go in there, it's not going to be a problem. Okay, so what do I put in this bowl here? Okay, so I'm going to put uh, four components. <laughs> now, I know that sounds like a lot, um, but actually, no, I'll correct myself. It's going to be five components. Uh, those are the following. So I've got a, uh, a dry egg and biscuit mix, a dry, I know it says parrot, but this is a finch crumble. Or I think it might be called a finch and budgie crumble. I could be wrong there. This is an uh, insectivore mix. Again, these are all dry mixes. I'm going to be putting in a, a little bit of my Prima, which is a food additive, which I usually put on the sprouted seed, but today's one of the off days, that I call it, where I don't give them the Prima. Uh, importantly, I'm going to be giving them freeze-dried mealworms, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of an um, edit <laughs> with those and last but not least I'm going to be putting in just a little bit of extra biscuit um, and I'm going to be crumbling that up and making it nice but essentially we're going to fill this up and this is going to feed them for you know easily a good couple of days um, they'll be able to get in here and peck at it and uh, yeah the chicks really love it uh, so here we go okay so I'm going to be doing this all a bit uh, one-handed obviously so please excuse my clumsiness <laughs> Okay, so first I'm going to be putting in the egg and biscuit. Now I put sort of probably a little bit more of this than any of the others um, themselves. And I've got my trusty uh, Paswell and Wombaroo scoops, of course. So essentially, I'm just going to put in a couple of scoops of the egg and biscuit. Make a real mess there. This is very hard to do one-handed. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to put in the insectivore mix. Maybe a, a scoop and a half of that, say. Uh, my finch and budgie crumbles. Maybe a, a, a little bit extra of that. There's no real set amounts, I guess, of these. I sort of just put in the amount uh, that's going to fill the container. Uh, then I get a bit of my Prima additive, and I just sort of give that just a little, a little bit. Not too much of that. Okay, now, the biscuit I'm going to need two hands for, because it's a bit hard to do it, but essentially I've given half the biscuit to my dog, and the other half is going to the birds. You can hear him drinking water now, because he's just had a big bit of biscuit. Um, now I'm just going to crumble this up and put it on top, and you'll see in a moment uh, what I, how I do that. Alright, so there you go. So I've just given a sort of a liberal bit of biscuit in here. Some bits I leave a little bit more chunky, uh, especially the parents like to uh, nibble at them. And uh, even my, my finches um, definitely love to chew on a little bit of the biscuit, Gouldians in particular I find. And I also give the biscuits to my uh, my parrots as well, who love to, uh, yeah, love to chew on them. And obviously they have a, a nice uh, sort of 
some kind of flavor that they really like. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna be adding in some of these freeze-dried freeze mealworms. Now, you can get these live, obviously, um, and the parents uh, love those. <laughs> they will devour them uh, very eagerly. Uh, but of course, the chicks are very small, so they can't quite really handle a, a huge mealworm like this. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna get them and sort of uh, crumble these up as well into little pieces. Now, um, you'll see the parents will actually grab the pieces and uh, you know, get the chicks to come over and eat them. They're a very, very popular item. And um, look, I don't know when they're freeze dried. They still obviously taste pretty good. The parents will love to eat them. Um, but all I do is I just sort of crumble them up. And as we have, uh, I think, 11 chicks, we're going to be putting in quite a few of these uh, crumbled up. So I'm going to do that and we'll have a look at the end result. Okay, so here we have it. This is the end result. I've got my... Uh, sprouted seed and I guess in, it's also soaked seed in the end and here's my dry mix now um, like I said that'll easily last a couple of days they'll, they'll we'll peck through all of that um, and of course they also have access to seed which I'll I'll show you in a moment uh, when I put these all in the aviary you'll see the the little seed bowl and again the seed bowl is another one of these shallow dishes and that's filled with my finch mix, some uh, budgie or parakeet mix, and a little bit of green seed, which could be uh, barnyard grass, I believe. Uh, but you'll see uh, it's just some uh, green seeds and, of course, our shallow water bowl. So let's go put that in the aviary and, uh, and have a look at them. Okay, so you can see uh, I've just put the fresh <laughs> foods in and straight away they're getting pretty eagerly devoured. Uh, now of course the albino bird is a hen. I'm just going to move this water bowl out of the way because they're getting that a little bit messy. Um, she'll grab the, uh, the little bits of mealworm there. I hope you can see that. I'm going to try and zoom in. And grabbing them out for the young ones. You can see the benefit of putting them into smaller pieces. Uh, the chicks have a chance to really get into those. And of course the sprouted seed is a, always a popular item. <laughs> I never get tired of watching uh, quail chicks <laughs> getting stuck into food with their parents. Um, you can see there the seed bowl, they're easily accessible. Chicks can get on top there and uh, get into these foods, whereas a normal one of my normal seed bowls um, is quite high, and of course I have the tray to catch the excess seed. They can still get in there, believe me. I've, I've seen them jump up in there, and uh, the parents will will call them up there. But um, these shallow bowls are such a so much a better idea, and uh, like I said, they're very cheap. I think they're perhaps around the dollar mark or something. Very easy to replace and clean. Uh, I'm sorry for the echoey sound, but of course I'm inside the aviary here. Um, yeah, there's a little chick there getting a bit of water. Hopefully you'll see them. Oh, okay. Of course it's not gonna cooperate. <laughs> but you'll see them, they'll usually um, have a bit of water out of there. As you can see, I've got quite a few chicks at the moment. Now, these guys are about a week old. You can see the, the oldest ones are starting to get some pin feathers on their wings. Um, personally, I find that once they get the pin feathers on the wings, then uh, they're usually home and hosed. But uh, um, these early days are quite dangerous for a, a little quail. Uh, 
but these guys uh, are very lucky. They've got uh, great parents and uh, they've really raised them well. Okay, well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful to you. I hope uh, either you've come looking for a little bit of advice as to keeping quails, uh, the king quails in particular, and how to feed their chicks, or perhaps you've just come to have a look at uh, at a bit of footage of my quails. That's uh, Either way, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, now, at the end of this video, I'm going to come back in perhaps... Um, a few weeks and we're going to have a look at the quails as they've aged a little bit more and I'm just going to put in some some footage at the end uh, of the quail chicks as they've got a little bit larger I think that'll be quite enjoyable for everyone to see so uh, thank you for watching this video uh, check out the links in the description below I'll put a video into the sprouted seed see there's a couple of chicks that uh, become quite independent now oh, they're gonna run away now <laughs> uh, yeah I'll put a link in the description below on how I do my sprouted seed and I'm also going to do a future video on exactly what uh, dry um, supplements I use so uh, look out for that and when I when I do that of course I'll put that in the description below as well uh, but thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the end of this video. Okay guys, I thought I'd do a quick little video here before I do go to the uh, aforementioned video of the chicks as they've got a little bit larger. As there was one thing I forgot to mention that I do give my uh, quails, and particularly my young quails. Now, probably in the first week or so it's not so important as uh, the the young quails are so small, they're, they're really more interested in the dry foods and uh, supplements. Um, now I'm about to give them some of their usual dry food mix with some of my uh, little pellets and the uh, mealworms as I've shown you guys earlier. Um, and of course they've got their sprouted seed which sprouted a little bit too much this time. <laughs> but uh, that's alright and they're going to get a replacement little water bowl. And that's for my other birds of course. Uh, but the other thing I give the chicks that they really love is some of these salads. Now, I give these to my uh, finches currently anyway. Um, they love this uh, kale slaw mix, which has the uh, shredded up kale, uh, uh, carrot, uh, some celery. Um, I think it has a bit of beetroot as well. Now, it says it has broccoli in it. I don't know how much of that it has, and I add in some of my own anyway. Um, yeah, this stuff's really great. I do take out the cabbage though. I don't give them the cabbage out of it. Now the finches love that. They also don't mind nibbling this um, sort of normal salad, but this is more what the quails would be interested in as they really enjoy the iceberg lettuce. Uh, it has the carrot in it. Um, now I know it does say it's Thousand Island dressing, <laughs> but I obviously don't put the dressing on. I don't put the uh, bacon in either. Um, but this has, um, yeah, a little bit more of the lettuce and carrot for them to eat, uh, which they really love. Uh, I then also put in some broccoli, as these little, the little tiny little pieces of broccoli are great for the young quails. They're easily to easy for them to eat. Um, finches love those as well. Um, and the other thing I do is I put in little pieces of corn. Now, one trick I do, and I'll show you after I've done it. Um, well, you can usually leave it on the cob for adult quails or parrots um, and most finches. Um, when they have young quails, what I do, if I can come over here, is I actually squash the, uh, the corn kernels. Now, just watch the juice does go everywhere. And that gives the young quails access to sort of the uh, smaller pieces and... Uh, a bit of the uh, moisture inside and uh, that's one of their favorite things to grab e each small quail will come and grab one of these little bits of corn and uh, run off with it and uh, <laughs> and peck away at it so it's something that I find that they really love and I'm sure it's full of uh, besides the liquid which is good for them anyway um, they obviously love the taste because it's one of their favorite things uh, so now I'm just going to put it in a in a bowl here and I'm going to show you uh, the final result okay so here is the finished uh, sort of presentation <laughs> I guess you can call it so as you can see here I've sort of um, 
uh, crushed up the corn so it's a um, bit more um, accessible for the for the young ones and they they love it they just come and grab that corn uh, it's probably their favorite thing besides the uh, the mealworms which uh, definitely the parents like as well um, yeah this little this little salad mix is really great for them uh, my finches love this kind of stuff as well um, and of course if a lot of parrots will and stuff like that but of course I only have the finches and quails in there at the moment um, but yeah I find these sort of uh, mixes the the mixed stuff you can get from the supermarket is a really easy way to do it you can of course buy your own kale and carrot etc and grate it and chop it up and all that kind of stuff but I find I generally buy a sort of a bag a couple of bags or one bag each of those a week and just uh, yeah use that for the week and then buy a new bag and it's it's, it's a pretty inexpensive way to do it uh, the broccoli lasts a long time as well. I don't feed heaps of that, but you can see I've sort of um, pulled the broccoli apart for them too, so they can access that a lot easier. I mean, of course, you only really have to do this when they're small. Once they get a, bit, a little bit larger, they can uh, <laughs> pull it all apart themselves. But uh, yeah, I, I do find the corn, uh, yeah, quite a good bonus for them. So uh, th yeah, this was one thing I just wanted to show you um, that I forgot to show you earlier. Um, the other thing I like to do occasionally as a bit of a treat is I give them these baby uh, crickets. Now these come in just a uh, little pack from your local pet store. Uh, you can feed the crickets carrot and uh, put in a bit of moisture for them. And uh, yeah, these are the extra small. Now these are small enough that the young quails can get to them. Now I probably wouldn't give them this until they're at least a week old or a bit more because they're just too small uh, to eat something like this. But uh, yeah, the adult quails will love stuff like this as well. Um, but uh, yeah, once they get a bit bigger, probably once a month or so, I usually buy one of these and I sort of uh, shake them out into the aviary and the, they go everywhere and the quails just love chasing them and eating them. Um, and uh, yeah, I maybe do that over the course of a week and then they're sort of gone and then I'm up, I'll probably do it again next month. I mean, aviaries always usually have a few bugs uh, for quails to snack on anyway, but... Uh, yeah, that was something else I forgot to mention earlier as well. So, so there you go. There's a couple of extra things that I do um, to feed my quails. So now, I'm, as promised, <laughs> I'm going to uh, give you a bit of footage of the quails as now they're a little bit older. So uh, thanks again for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy this last part. Um, again, yeah, please feel free to ask any questions at the end. Um, you know, put your questions below, and I I'd love to have a chat. Uh, or just say hi, <laughs> and I'll uh, yeah I'll catch you in the next video. But uh, yeah, please hang around and uh, have a look at the quails as they've got a little bit older. Bye for now.